of the Russell Wilson era in wow. Denver? It very much could be. After Russell Wilson was benched this morning, officially Sean Payton told the team this morning he is making a quarterback change yep. and starting Jared Stidham. We're going to talk about this massive news on the DNVR Broncos podcast where we've got a massive all-star lineup joined by Alexis Perry, Super Bowl 50 champ Todd Davis, Zach Stevens here. News breaking within the past hour that Sean Payton has made the move and benched the Broncos' $50 million a year quarterback. Yeah, this is huge news. Um, and it it solidifies all the thoughts that we had about their relationship, his trust in Russ. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't just speculation. I think we were spot on. So Russell Wilson will have to take a seat on that bench and watch as Stidham performs well or doesn't. But I think this is how – this is the end of Russell Wilson in Denver. It's done. Yeah, it's done. I think it's odd that he will be suited up, though, mm. on Sunday. I think if you're going to bench him and if it's going to go out this way, just make him an, like a healthy scratch. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's more embarrassing that he's going to be standing mm. on the sideline with his helmet in his hand, mm. um, potentially able to come back in. Um, I think yesterday Sean Payton hinted at this when he mentioned just how bad the offense has been and how they could be better. And I think that was his way of subtly hinting that a change was coming. Yeah, and I think this started two or three weeks ago yep. with Sean Payton. And we talked about it on the show. Sean Payton taking what I thought was direct shot after yep. direct shot after direct shot at Russ after a poor performance. And then yesterday, just like you said, Alexis, here's some of the things that Sean said just 24 hours ago about the Broncos offense. I thought it was pretty direct shots, but you tell me what you guys think. He said, we're average to below average in a lot of things offensively, and that's not good enough. Then he said, all the problems on offense are self-inflicted, and he said, that's communication. Is there too much in? Do we need to change how much is in? Mm -hmm. And then he said, the ball is out all the time now when talking about the differences from the five-game win streak to the yeah. team going one yeah. and three in the past four weeks, all of those, he's pointing the finger right at Russ because the ball was out because yeah. of Russ. So this, like, like you said, Alexis, not the most shocking news in the world, but you mentioned something before that. You said embarrassing. Man, I... This is embarrassing but is. for Russ, and as uh, from a personal perspective, I feel really bad for him because um, this move was made one year ago in Las Vegas with Derek Carr. He was benched, and you know what they did? They sent him home. They said, you know what? You just stay home. This is because yeah. of your contract. We don't want the injury guarantees to kick in, so we don't want you taking the field at all. I think that's why I'm shocked by this is because the Denver Broncos are not the Las Vegas Raiders mm. and to make a move that is exactly the same, I guess, other than the, the benching yeah. and the sending him home aspect of it. And maybe we'll see um, how this all plays out for week 18 as well. Uh, Cause right now this is just for week 17 is what this benching is for. But if all of a sudden Russell Wilson isn't around the building, it's concerning to me because the Denver Broncos, like I just mentioned, are not the Raiders. And this is kind of a Raiders move. And I don't love that just for the optics of the Denver Broncos that have always been one of, if not the classiest organizations. I just don't think you treat somebody like this two weeks left in the season. Am I just being dramatic? I know. I don't think it's necessary. Just like the move with K-Jack. Like, yeah. mm. we've got two weeks left. We're not making a playoff. Mm. Let's just finish out the year. But uh, Russ is a good guy, so he wouldn't take the path I would. I mean, if I'm practicing, <laughs> if I'm taking snaps, my hammy's going to hurt uh, so bad after yeah. tomorrow. Like, I can't do anything for at least six months <laughs> and see what happens because it just – I don't know. I think you just let him finish the season. What As are we starter? fighting for? You know, we have a 5% chance to make the playoffs. Let's be honest. That means we're not making the playoffs. Like, let's not even go into this whole, de you know, debacle right now. Let's just finish the year – and let him walk off, and we'll figure out what to do with it. You know, at that time, even though we're not, we know we're not bringing him back. 
I think we're making a public humiliation of him right now, and I don't, I don't know if it's necessary. So there's, there's so much to unpack with what both of you just said. And so there's two reasons that the Broncos could have benched Russell Wilson. One, the why the Raiders benched Derek Carr in the final yep. two games of the season, then said, see you, go home, don't step on that field, because I don't want that hammy uh-huh. tighten it yeah. up, just like Todd was <laughs> saying. Uh, they sent him home, said, you're done because you have injury guarantees in your contract moving forward and if you get hurt in these final two games um then those injury guarantees will kick in and so that's one reason the broncos could be doing this Mm -hmm. um but the fact that russ is going to be practicing he is going to be dressing he is going to be the backup to jared stidham really points to that's kind of a secondary reason why Sean Payton is making this move. Mm -hmm. The primary reason why Sean Payton is making this move, whether he fully believes it, whether it's just to send that extra message to Russ and that extra message to Broncos country when the Broncos do eventually move on from Russ this offseason, is to say Jared Stidham gives us a better chance to win this week. Jared Stidham gives us a better chance to win next week than Russell Wilson. And Jared Stidham gives us the best chance to make the playoffs. That's that's clearly, and, and from what I'm being told, too, that's the reason that Sean Payton is making this move right now. So the word embarrassing pops up. Yeah, uh, Jared Stidham's a $5 million a year quarterback. They signed yeah. him to a two-year $10 million deal, which, by the way, was kind of big when they signed him. Yep. But that's a tenth of the price of what Russell Wilson's making this year um, or, or in his contract. So it's it's a really tough day, but that's the message Sean Payton's sending is – We believe Jarrett Stidham is a better quarterback this Sunday after not having played and started a game for 350 days than Russell Wilson. I'm surprised by this as well because I know that Sean Payton looks at last year's Detroit Lions as kind of a benchmark for who this team could be moving forward. And like we know, the Lions, they stuck with their group. Now they did make some changes. We have seen a little bit of a different roster this year, but – they knew the importance of winning at the end of the season and the momentum of that could carry into the following year. And we've seen it play out this entire season. And I'm just surprised that you don't, maybe Todd, you looked at the film um, and obviously you had a great breakdown yesterday. Like was Russell Wilson really the reason, I guess, why they lost that game against the Patriots to the point where you bench the guy because Jarrett Stidham, like Zach just mentioned, a guy who hasn't played a single snap, uh, is going to give you a better chance? I think that not only last week, but for many weeks, he has not been the reason we've won the game. And there's so many times that Sean has tried to call great plays that mm-hmm. put Russ in good position to make big plays. I broke down one yesterday yeah. uh, that Jerry Judy was coming open on and over, and Russell Wilson was just so nervous that he started scrambling and yep. had Turned no pressure on him. To the defense. And that made – a play go from a play that was supposed to be great to a really bad one. And I think that's all Russell Wilson. I think if that happens over and over and over again, Sean feels so hog tied by his performance that he can only call very simple plays. And it's putting the team in a very bad position to where we can't even march down the field because we don't have any splash plays because one, you can't communicate them when I give them to you. And then two, you can't execute them. I think this is, has been happening for many games throughout yeah. the season. I do feel like Sean Payton is calling splash plays and Russell Wilson is checking the ball down more yeah. often than not. And that is not why, that's why we're not seeing this Sean Payton offense that we expected to see this year. And it is because of Russ. I just wonder, like, for the final two games of the year when you're pretty much already out of it, like, what message does this send to the team? And is it the message that you want to send heading into the final two games of the year when you're trying to build a little bit of momentum as you're implementing a winning mentality, correct? And and we'll get into it later in the show, but there's been two massive messages sent to the Broncos by uh, making this move of Jared Stidham, but then also Kareem Jackson, Mm -hmm. no longer on the team because the Broncos made the decision to move on from him. Maybe they got a little cocky thinking he was going to (laughs) fall to the practice squad. That did not happen as he got picked up by the Texans, but I think this could be Sean Payton saying... uh, There's going to be a lot of changes coming to Broncos country, not just on offense, not just on defense, but other parts of the building, general manager. I think we are in for another, another wild offseason with another quarterback search here. And uh, 
Does this officially put the end to Russell Wilson? Or is there a chance that after seeing Jared Stidham in the final two games that Sean's like, no, nah, we'll bring you back, Russ? No, I think this is the end. I think if Stidham doesn't work out, then we're going to find another quarterback out there, draft somebody. But I think this is the end of Russell Wilson. Um, you talked about the message this sends. I think it is, in some ways, it kind of puts everybody on alert. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter if you make $2 million a year. It doesn't matter if you make $50 million a year. You're either going to come and play well or you're going to be gone. And, you know, in those kind of situations, the big dogs step up and the little dogs get kicked out the room. So, um, you know, I think everybody needs to be on their toes and, and be prepared. Like, these last two games aren't just go out there and, you know, hang out. Yeah. Like, everybody's right. being evaluated. And I hope that the guys know these next two games, all these snaps matter more than any snaps throughout Ooh. the entire regular season. Ooh. They always remember how you finish. It's not always how you start, but they remember how you finish, and they're ultra-evaluating everybody right now. So it's, it's an important time for all the guys trying to make this team next year. Do you think that got even more important and these games got even bigger, like you're saying, after making this move of Russ? Yeah, for sure. Because it's going to help Sean evaluate all the players he has outside of Russ whether if they were contributing to Russ being bad or not. So if mm. they show up to play in these next mm. two games, he can eliminate them from like, okay, that was Russ making you know bad mistakes. These guys can play. Let's bring them back. Or if they don't play well, they're in the same boat with Russ. Get them out of here too. So then from inside the locker room, you know how we talk about the interim head coach boost? And yep. we see it every week. The yep. Raiders, when they Chargers their first game. Last week. Yeah, the Chargers this last week, 12 and a half point dogs, almost beat the Bills. Crazy. Uh, I mean, that was certainly the interim head coach boost. Will the Broncos' entire roster get this boost by, I know it's Sean's not gone, it's not a new interim head coach, but everyone being on alert that much more? I think so. Mm. And I can't speak for everybody in the locker room, but I don't know if guys are shocked. I don't think guys feel like this is the wrong decision. So I think guys will come ready to play like, in some ways, finally I can get an opportunity to do what I need to do. Mm, you know who I don't think is shocked at all by this move? Crazy enough. Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a second. After I tell you about our friends over at Bet365, where I'm very curious. How do you think the line has moved Whew. over at Bet365? Do you think Ooh, it's moved at all? Do you think... Now the Chargers are closer to being favorites in this. How do you think the lines moved over at Bet365? We went from 7.5 to 12.5. <laughs> so the Broncos started off as 5.5 point favorites um, over at Bet365. Now they're three point favorites. So Bet365 isn't buying the Jared mm. Stidham gives them the best chance <laughs> to win here. They're saying, ah, this moves to embarrass Russell Wilson a little bit. And really, for those injury guarantees, they're not buying that first part, which I'm sure is what Sean's going to tell us later today. And we're going to have that over at the DNVR.com. But if you believe in Jared Stidham and you want to buy the line at three, use the code DNVR365 over at Bet365. And they're going to give you an option uh, <coughs> to either have a free safety bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets, or if you bet $10, you're gonna get $150 in bonus bets. You actually only have to place a $5 bet to get $150 in bonus bets over at Bet365, where you know they're gonna have so many lines on Jared Stidham that you can bet on this weekend. The future of Russell Wilson's also gonna be up at some point over at Bet365, so check them out and use that code DNVR365 when you sign up. You must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, once help, call or text 1 800 Gambler. And shout out to our friends over at Backus and Shanker. When you get hurt, Backus and Shanker is here to help. You can call them by smashing the two, 222 2222, to set up a consultation. Backus and Shanker wins for Colorado families, and they've been doing it for over 25 years. The great thing about them is they're free until they win money for your case. There's no upfront fee to speak with them about your case, and there's no fee while they're working on your case. They only get paid when you get paid. And speaking of getting paid, they've won over a billion dollars for their clients, and they have even more locations serving all of Colorado, including neighborhood offices in Denver, Aurora, Inglewood, and Fort Collins. More than 30 lawyers ready to assist you. Smash the two, 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 two. Call them now to set up a consultation. So I mentioned Russ probably is not that shocked because we saw it after the game <coughs> on Sunday. Russ was, you can tell he was down. He's down after a lot of losses, but we know Russ always brings the positivity. Glass he always full? believes the glass is always half full, if not just full, just even, so even when just it's empty. Overflowing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and that's just the type of guy Russ is. Yeah. Except 
for after this game. Yeah. He was down in the dumps, and he did something that I've never seen him do before. So um, the second-to-last question of his press conference, he was asked about his future with the Broncos, which he has not been asked about since it was a positive question about uh-huh. what do you want to do with your new five-year deal? And he said, I want to play uh, 10 to 12 more years, win three or four more Super Bowls, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and be one of the you know best quarterbacks ever. Um, he was asked about his future, and he said, I'm just worried about next week and playing great football. I came here to win and win championships for us and to find a way to do that. I obviously love being here with these guys, these teammates. I'm excited to keep playing and keep playing hard for us. Then he took one more question, and then he ended the press conference. Mm. And uh, a Denver Broncos employee was actually asked, in the middle of asking him another question, he said, thanks, and walked off. Poor Eric. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) That's the first time that I've ever seen a player in my eight years covering the team end a press conference. The only other person that does that and that has ever done that is Sean Payton. Mm -hmm. He commands his own press conferences. Um, And I It really felt like in the moment that he was asked that question about his future, caught off guard by it a little bit because Uh he was just focused on this game and how close of a game it was Mm -hmm. and the comeback and just fell short. And he talked about it and kind of took a step back, answered one more question, and then just said, I can't do this anymore because he kind of realized what was coming, what could be coming. And it's it's crazy because I actually feel bad for him because he's got to be tired, man. Yeah. He's got to be tired of like, what do you want to call it, thinking the funk or trying to stay positive and working hard in the offseason, trying to bounce back. And I don't know what happened that kind of changed him as a player. I don't know if it was all Pete Carroll, if something happened. Um, But he's definitely not who he was or even wants to be. And to try and, like, go after it day in and day out in every game and try to be better and try to encourage, like, I think he's tired. I think he's exhausted. And maybe he just needs a break. He's emotionally exhausted. He has to be. be. As a human being, like, there's no way. And I remember talking about this during the offseason. It's like, how much can one person take? He was drug through the, you know, the mud last year. And this year, you know that he, it was like comeback tour. Mm -hmm. That's what he was focused on. And to come out here, to start one, and it's the roller coaster that's, like, so frustrating for me. And I think for a lot of fans, it's like, start one and five you're like okay nothing's really changed from last year russ is washed and then he's helping win games late in the fourth quarter he looks like vintage russ all of a sudden they go on a five game win streak obviously the defense had a big hand in that but they were putting up (coughs) enough points to win and they were doing enough right on the offensive side of the ball to win games and then to kind of sputter here down the stretch i just you feel for the guy because just like we've been going on this emotional roller coaster for as long as we have, he's been physically in it day to day playing these games. And if you think that Russell Wilson wants to go out there and lay an egg, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. He wants to go out there and he wants to be his best. And it's like for him to see the same results that we're seeing, he's watching the film the next day too. Imagine how frustrated he is seeing, Oh shit. Jerry Judy was wide open. Oh shit. But like, you can't, you can't go back in time. All you could do is be better the next week, and he still continues to make the same mistakes. I just feel for the guy because his legacy heading into Denver mm-hmm. was so strong and potentially a Hall of Famer. And now it's like, what does he do? Just retire and, I mean, that's not riding off into the sunset. No. That's oh, riding off into the hubs of hell. I don't know what that is. It's well, going to be so sucks. interesting yeah. what his him. future means. And how about And how about this? On December 26th last year, Nathaniel Hackett was fired. Mm. On December 27th of this year, Russell Wilson was benched. You mentioned how crazy of a year and a half it's been. Wild. Oh, this just keeps getting crazier. And speaking of this show getting crazier, how about a little James Palmer yeah. joining us right <gasps> now? A little surprise appearance. There James, speaking of surprises, how surprised are you about this move? Mm. <laughs> I'm a little surprised. I'll be honest. I am a little bit surprised because I, I, I would do this. This season has been about can Sean Payton work with Russell Wilson? That's it. I think we have to remember Bill Parcells always said it best. You want to shop with the groceries you bought, right? Mm. Yep. Russell Wilson was not a grocery that Sean Payton bought. Mm. He inherited Russell Wilson. So you always want to... You know, and that's where Sean comes from. You know, Sean comes from from Parcells, and, and that's where a lot of his thinking comes from. 
And so, you know, I always thought, though, that it was going to be they were going to give this everything they had to make it work. And there's been a lot of adjustments that's had to happen. Sean's put a lot on himself. I won't say that he's blamed Russ for everything. He's blamed himself as a teacher for a lot of it as well. But it's a massive adjustment that he's had to make. Going from a player like Drew Brees that can do everything at once. I mean, like 90 different things at the same time. There's only a few guys in the league right now that can do that in Sean's mind. And I don't believe Russ is one of them. But it doesn't mean you can't win with Russ either. And that's why I'm saying, you know, Sean has had to go through some changes because he's had to teach differently. He's had to adapt and change his offense. I just was curious if they were going to give it the whole length of the season to really fully evaluate it. But to me, it, it now comes to a conclusion that Sean says, no matter how I change my teaching, I'm not sure if I can win with this guy. Because I'm told directly, like, this is a football decision. This is not a financial decision. We can talk about the money I was told come March. Like, they're like, we're thinking about, we know that's part of it. We know the money's part of it. And we'll talk about that down the road. But this is about changing the offense and doing something differently. And I've told people, I said this to Kurt Warner when we were watching practice on Friday because we were calling this Christmas Eve game. And Kurt's like, who's the backup here? And I was like, Jared Stidham. <laughs> and I go, and I go, and listen, man, like Sean went out and signed Jared at like the start of free agency. And he gave him $10 million to be the backup for two years. Right. Like, Todd, that's a good chunk of change yep. to be your backup and go out and make a move immediately. The Raiders thought they were going to be getting Stidham back, in all honesty. And that had always stuck with me. I said that to Kurt on Friday, actually. I didn't know this was happening. But I was like, I had always stuck with me that there was a reason why Sean made that move. And now we're seeing this kind of, you know, I think Sean wants to see with another quarterback right now, it allows him, the one positive is, to evaluate the other 10 guys on the offense. Because you could be sitting here going, is the quarterback holding back some of these guys? Mm. Yeah. I watch the film and I know that there are guys open. I'm saying that is Sean. I'm not sitting here watching all the films to be <laughs> around, guys. But like uh, everybody has access to the all 22 and it drives Sean nuts. But like <laughs> he, he, when he's watching the film, he's seeing guys that are open. He wants to know if this is a rust problem or there's other problems within this offense. So I do think these two games gives him the ability to evaluate some other pieces on the offense. James, quick question. If this is a football decision, then why isn't this decision made after they start one and five, after the bye week, come out and, and start fresh with Stidham then? Why do it now? I, I don't think, Alexis, it was enough of a sample size. I, I think it was probably too small. I just think. All of you last know, year didn't count? No, I mean, he didn't have them all last year. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't. He, I mean, he saw listen, the film. If there's, if there's any. No, yeah, he saw the film, but <laughs> listen, if there's anything that coaches have, it's arrogance. Just wait till I get my hands on them. Just wait until I work with them. That is the way a lot of head coaches think. So I don't think there was enough time for him to have his hands on Russ to realize and see that quickly what he liked, what he didn't like. I also mentioned, like, Sean is, is arrogant as a teacher. He's very good at it. He, he's a tremendous football teacher. Mm -hmm. So I think also he was thinking, I can fix this. And, and I don't think that was enough time probably to fix it entirely. And he wanted to, like I mentioned, a larger sample size. That's why I thought maybe they'd take the season. But now you do get a chance to look at some other guys. You know, it's funny. I keep thinking about that comment you made of you want to shop with the things that you bought. <laughs> uh, and I feel yeah. like Sean was that contested on the on the cooking game show where the, they come <laughs> out and the people have the carts. You just got to buy whatever's in the cart. And he's trying yeah. to make dough and there's no eggs. There's no butter. There's <laughs> no milk. Um, but yeah. speaking of things he bought, you brought up Jared Stidham. Is Stidham now actually being viewed and looked at as a potential starter for next year? Or is he just the guy that's going to come in and play these next two games and then Sean's going to take uh, you know, into account the other guys in the league and the guys coming up to be drafted to really find his starter? I think everything is part of the evaluation. And I think you have to look at the price I mentioned because you're going to have to go cheap. Like if you move on from Russell Wilson yeah. financially with where you're at, you need to find a guy to play the position. I mean, you can't go out there without a quarterback. And you probably need to find a guy that's going to be able to play it at a reasonable price. So Stidham's at $7 million for next year. Only $1 million is guaranteed. So you could have the idea of a $7 million quarterback, which is phenomenal if you think he can play that gap year. Say you want to eat the $85 million in one year. Even say you want to split up the 85 between two years. This is the dead money we're talking about. Between two years, and you're almost in like a really difficult situation financially for two seasons or one season in terrible situation. If you have a quarterback that you think can be serviceable for a year, yeah, you might as well take a look at Stidham right now and be like, maybe he could be our starter for next year. Maybe we have him and, and draft a, a quarterback. Um, I think you do have to weigh in the option of 
he's going to cost us seven million bucks. And if he can win some games, and I brought him here because I like him, let's see if he can go do it. We know financially where we stand for the next season or the next two seasons. Maybe Jarrett's the guy that can get us through that while we find our next quarterback. So I do think you are evaluating him as a potential option uh, because right now, the way it looks, you're going to need to look at a lot of different options on how you're going to fill that spot. And financially, they're going to all have to be reasonably cheap. James, you mentioned the, all the dead cap with Russ's contract, and that's what just made this decision so big is now it does seem like there's no way Russ is back. Is there any trade market for Russ, or is it just strictly looking at cutting him and taking that dead cap and then the decision being whether to take it all in year one or splitting it up? I would think, Zach, like the only thing I can think of that's close to it is Carson Wentz. And the Eagles somehow, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of pictures Howie Roseman had, but <laughs> had the Colts take on a large part of that contract, and they took out a little bit of it um, as well. But that's the only one I can think of where somebody moved on uh, and traded for a guy that had you know, pretty massive numbers that was uh-huh. on the decline and essentially was benched, right? You know, Jalen Hurts came in and stole the job from, from Carson Wentz, and Carson was still on that massive contract that Philly had given him. This, this contract's even worse, I mean, than Carson's. It's more money. Uh, it's more guaranteed money. It's, it's, it's in a completely different spot than Carson's was. But that's almost the only one I can think of that's close to it. I, I, after you look at the last two years, like Alexis brought up last year wasn't enough for you. I mean, now you saw last year with one coach. You saw this year with another coach. And I'm curious what the trade market would be. Like, I, the, the position is irrational. We know that, uh, opposed to any other position in all of football. Um, so teams can reach. But maybe like a situation we saw in Tampa this past year where they went and got Baker as just like a stopgap just to see and reevaluate the, the program. And now, look, him and Danny, Dave Canales are, are crushing it as, an, as a duo. Um, and, he's play, and he's playing well. But like I think he's at 35. You can see he can't move like he used to, and that was such a huge part of his game. Um, the mental part of playing, playing the position at this age just gets greater and greater. Um, and I think that's what we've seen over the last two years is, is that sustainable for us with a lack of physical attributes that have carried him for a lot of his career. Um, I, I don't see much of a market unless he's willing to go on the cheap and just, you know, there, there's always ways you can yeah. manipulate money, yeah. but it doesn't seem like there's much of one right now. Quick question, just when it comes to the arrogance of head coaches, like you mentioned, Sean Payton definitely is an arrogant coach and, and he's a great one at that, but is there any bit of accountability that he needs to be taking for how this offense has performed throughout this season? Or is this really all on mm. Russell Wilson? It's a great question. Um, I mean, I, I would assume if you're self-scouting yourself, Alexis, sorry, like you're going to have to take some of the blame. Um, he is the one who paid a boatload of money to bring in a right tackle and a guard uh, at the start of free agency to change this offense, right? Like he, that was a big part of, of his decision-making. I think you could say that Mike and probably hasn't played up to what Sean Payton probably has wanted from a pass protection standpoint. Um, those are decisions that fall on him. Uh, those are parts uh, that fall on him as well. Um, so yeah, I think some of it does fall on him and the conversations I've had with him and, and what I know around the building is he does think he's been able to change a lot for this team to be successful but I think he always knew with who they had like it was Hank relax who they've always had is um you know the margin for error was very small and I think they knew that coming in and I think they found you know lightning in a bottle for a minute there they just knew like they can only be successful if they don't turn the football over and they run the football consistently well and they make a play or two here like that's what they were banking on I don't think you can bank on that for an entire season it happened for a little stretch. So I do think there's things that fall on Sean, and he knows that. But again, the guy who's handling the football and the guy who's going to run the entire show, when that's limiting what you know you can do, uh, and I think Sean thinks that, that's when you need to make change and then evaluate yourself again. And I know, I know you're on the sidelines for uh, Sunday's game, and you look phenomenal, Appreciate by the way. I just wanted to say oh, that. <laughs> nice, fresh haircut. Palm trees. Looking good. That, yeah. that gray yeah. coat was sick, too. <laughs> uh, that coat was phenomenal. Um, oh my gosh, that coat got me warm big time. That was, I was, a, it was a massive purchase. Yeah. There it is. Did you? Was there anything on the sidelines that you saw that the cameras didn't catch mm-hmm. that led you to believe like this was coming or this was about to happen with Russell Wilson and Sean Payton? You know, Sean said something to us, and I said this in my pregame report, Todd, like 
he he had a lot of concerns with them playing this game at home on Christmas Eve because of the distractions. He would have preferred this game actually to be on the road because then you're you're isolated. Yeah. You know, you're on the road Christmas Eve. It's just the team. Right now, he can't control like who you have visiting, who's at your house, who's there, and he wanted like more than anything for anybody watching that film on Monday morning to sit there. You know, Snound, watch the All Twenty Two. Like I said, everybody's got it available to them now. Uh, <laughs> NFL Plus, subscribe um, and. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, keep keep me you know getting paid. And so he wanted people to be able to watch that film, Todd, and go, "Oh, that's the team that has something to play for. That's mm-hmm. the effort. That's something to play for." That like just didn't happen. What I saw on the sideline was a team that was just almost like subdued and just accepting that like this is us, man. We're just like, and I was like, you were on the break of like, or the brink, I guess is a better word, brink of like playoff birth. Like you yeah. win these three, you're, you're you got a really decent chance of being in. And it was just dead on the sideline. Like we saw more fire during that game against the Lions, where you know Sean and Russ, you know Sean's going at Russ, mm-hmm. and you're seeing that. You just didn't see anything on the sideline. Like I kept waiting. Like I'm like the producers getting my ear going. Like we got what are we got going on the sideline? I'm like nothing. We got we got mm-hmm. nothing going on, and I'm shocked mm-hmm. by that. Like there wasn't a, a juice to it, Todd, by by any stretch, which to me was really surprising, and maybe it is telling. Yeah, and James, you bring so much juice. Thanks so much for hopping on in between your radio hits. Anything before we let you go? Any final thoughts? Final, th- final thoughts. Yeah, I wanted to come in today and, and be on the show with you guys, but I, you know, I do too much television. That's why I'm sitting right here. I'm not moving from this spot for the next like <laughs> eight hours, probably. <laughs> well, man, the Broncos are going to keep us on our toes all season. I guess my my final thought is when when I see this move. I just, and Kareem Jackson in the past 24, 48 hours, I just think that this offseason there's going to be so many changes because Sean Payton, as you said, is going to be the ones buying groceries, and he's going to change up his grocery list a lot. Big time. I will say this, though. From my understanding, that move with Kareem had much more to do with P.J. Locke than it had to do with Kareem. Mm -hmm. He got Wally Pipp, man. He got mm. Wally Pip. For all you young people, go out and look who Wally Pip is. Oh, we know <laughs> Wally Pip. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, Tell I don't get Wally Pip by exactly. James in this <laughs> seat. But James, thank you so much for jumping on. We love your insight yeah, uh, and, and your ability to come on right now. For sure. Tell Baldy I said what's up. Is he on a little oh, later? We will. Here, yeah. We will. And okay. speaking of Baldy, we might have him join us in just a second after I tell you about our friends over at Shady Rays. You mentioned James Fit. The only thing he needed on the sidelines some was shady some rays. shady rays, yep. especially at night. That just would have put him over the top. Uh, and if it was a s- snow game, it was almost a snow game, he might have even needed some shady rays, uh, snow goggles, and you can get so many of those over at shadyrays.com. Use code DNVR to get 50% off two or more pairs of sunglasses, goggles, anything you need. Shady Rays has got it. You want to buy a late Christmas present for someone? Use the code DNVR and you're going to get 50% off the pair for your friend or your family member and a pair for yourself. So check them out, ShadyRays.com. They have over 250,000, thousand five-star reviews. So they uh, are, are a great product and use that code DNVR. Okay, well, Christmas is behind us, but in the event you have somewhere to go, you need a last-minute holiday gift to bring in, uh, be sure to get yourself some Breckenridge bourbon, the official bourbon of the Denver Broncos. Um here at DNVR ticket contest, I guess I should have said. Uh, you guys can win two tickets to the Breckenridge Bourbon Whiskey Suite for the Broncos and Chargers game that is coming up this Sunday. When does that close? Um, pretty darn soon. So it you has better, to be yeah, soon. Yeah, you got to get in. You got to get in on that. Like you guys know, Breckenridge Distillery is the world's highest distillery founded in 2008. They are widely known for their blended bourbon whiskey, a high ride mash American style whiskey. Breckenridge Bourbon is one of the most highly awarded craft bourbons in the U.S. Of course, it's an award-winning spirit offering an immersive guest experience at the actual Breckenridge Distillery, which I have been to, and I just think it is the coolest spot. It's really fun. You can go in, do some whiskey tastings, kind of go around, get yourself a coffee afterwards, a crepe down the street in Breck. It's it's a really fun experience up there in Breckenridge, so go check it out. Also check out their Reiki Seltzers. They're made with Breck spirits. Uh, Breckenridge Distillery products are available in all 50 states. Shop your local retailer or visit BreckenridgeDistillery.com. I'll pray anywhere. So like James said, the Broncos 30 minutes into free agency opening signed Jared Stidham, two-year, $10 million deal, and from what I heard, and James also pointed to it as well, 
the Raiders were shocked. Mm -hmm. The Raiders thought that Jared Stidham's coming back here. Yeah. He might even be our starter next year. But Sean Payton put out such an aggressive offer to Stidham that he said, I'm not even going to talk Swoop. to the Raiders. I'm just going to take this money and uh, run with it, be the backup in Denver. And maybe there was a conversation with Sean saying, oh, Russ? No, that, that's not my grocery. Mm -hmm. See, he wasn't on my list. You are the quarterback that I want. Does Jared Stidham give the Broncos a better chance to win this week? From the sample size that we've had, I, I don't know if I can confidently say yes. Um, I think he's a solid quarterback. I don't know if he is the best man for the job. But we are playing the Chargers, and <laughs> <laughs> we may need very little from the quarterback this week. Uh, to get the job done. So, yeah, I think he could get it done this week. But mm. is he a better option? Better option at this than moment? Russ. No, yeah, I wouldn't say so. And that's fair. I mean, he has, like I said, he hasn't started a game in 350 days or yeah. something like that. And Russ started one two days ago, yeah. three days ago. Um, so I, I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, Alexis, what do you think? It's just interesting because sometimes I think, like, the guys who are sitting in the room, and Todd, you can – obviously speak to this much better than I could. The guys who are sitting in the room who don't see a lot of playing time, they're the ones who are studying that film nonstop because they're just waiting for their opportunity to come and improve something. Like Jared's been watching this film and he's seeing all the ways and that Russ is making mistakes week in and week out. And he's like, man, I would do this differently. I would do that differently. Is there something to be said about being the guy who hasn't played and coming in and saying, hey, this is my time to shine. I'm going to go in and show them that this really was Russ making all these mistakes. Yeah, for sure. You just hope that he was watching that film you uh, intensely because he could have <laughs> just been like, man, I'm not going to play it. I'll just sit back and take this $5 million. I'll like Russ yeah. figure out, finish out the year and figure out what happens. Um, I hope he's been on it, but he, he should definitely have another edge to him because this is his big break. Like, yeah. I don't think he'll get a bigger opportunity than these next two games to show uh, what he can do in the National Football League. So if he ever wants to be a starter, if he ever wants to make a name for himself, if he ever wants to be a $100 million quarterback, he has to prove it, uh, and he gets a good opportunity to do it these next two weeks. No no pressure, Jared. No. Right? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully Sean didn't give him that speech, or Sean did give him that speech and yep. wants to see how he performs under pressure starting in the first quarter, because we know when push came to shove, Russ could do it in the fourth quarter. Yeah. But when you get yourself buried in a 16-point hole in the fourth quarter, when you only have 50 passing yards entering the fourth quarter yeah. to a 3-11 football team, that's where I think Sean had enough. Sean, sure, the fourth quarter yeah. magic's great, but if you can only pass for 50 total yards, yep. including the sacks, in three quarters, again, against a really bad team at home in a game where you absolutely need it, that was the final uh, straw for Sean Payton. And uh, Sean probably looks at what Jared Stidham did in this exact same situation mm. last year. Do you remember what Jared Stidham did in the final two games or even the very first game that nope. he played last year with the Raiders? I just had Can't it open, say. but it started playing some uh, something, something over here, <laughs> so I had to close it out really fast. <laughs> Todd, how's the uh, San Francisco Giants defense? Very good. Last year they were pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Jared Stidham put up 30 Four points mm. on that defense in week 17. He went 23 of 34, 67% completion. Is that good? Pretty good. Three touchdowns. Good? Yeah, that's good. 365 passing yards. That's great. Two interceptions. Ah, Not the best. Yeah. Uh, just two plays, though. <laughs> 108 passer rating. They did lose the game 37 to 34, but, Damn. I mean, those interceptions aren't the best. Uh-huh. But what a first game for Jared Stidham last year. And uh, what type of coach do you think Russ, or Sean Payton thinks Josh McDaniels is? Because that's who was Trash. coaching him last year. Not, not the best. I think you're right. Yeah, <laughs> I think you said that nicely, Todd. I, think, uh, I didn't say that nicely. A more spot on. Probably trash. So he says, if that's what Jared Stidham was able to do without playing football in so long, with that quarterback or, or with that head coach and that team, what can I do? With Jared Stidham, and I think that's the game that got Sean so hooked on Jared, yep. at least for a backup, to go out and pay him $5 million a year to say, if things don't work out with Russ, I want you to be my guy temporarily for yep. this year. And uh, I think James hit it spot on with, I don't see any other s scenario right now than a rookie, 
and Jarrett Stidham or a quarterback that Jarrett Stidham's caliber. And uh-huh. we saw Sean already put a stamp on Jarrett Stidham. So we saw it last year. He had a massive game. Now, his second game, the last game of the season for the Raiders, Jarrett Stidham put up 13 points against the Kansas City Chiefs. He was mm. 22 for 36, 61% completion, 219 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception, 76 passer rating. So mm. it's not like it was all sunshine and rainbows. Um, but, uh, but I think that... Sean, I think the biggest thing is Sean thinks Jarrett Stidham can operate his offense better than Russell Wilson was able to. In terms of everything you've pointed out on the inside scoop for multiple weeks in a row, specifically yesterday, just operating the offense, staying in the pocket, not abandoning, not turning his back, not, not hurting the offensive line by literally a play you showed yesterday, running in to a pass rusher when there was good protection, when he could have stepped up and hit Jerry Judy open there. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I'm not trying to take shots at Russ, but it should be uh, simple to have success um, in Sean's offense against the Chargers. It should be a pretty easy game plan um, this week. So why not? Actually, oh, that begs another question. This week specifically against the Chargers, why do this this week? given the fact that I think of all the weeks, this is really a, a good week that this team could come back and, and bounce back and be get right game for both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the Chargers, they have the interim head coach boost going right now, but, like, it's the Chargers, you know? Like, don't you think that Russell Wilson could go up against this Chargers defense and make something happen? Yeah, but if he's not going to be our guy long next term? year or long term – then we got to find a way to evaluate Stidham, and this is kind of like the best time yep. to do it yep, against true. like a lower caliber opponent. Yep. Like, let's see it's what true. he can do. And kind of not necessarily the embarrassing route, but uh-huh. Sean probably wants Stidham to look good and see if he can make a quarterback look good in this offense with this system as opposed to th- this move shows that, that Sean is done with Russ. Yeah. Done with him. And he must have got the idea that there is no trade value for Russ right now, or else, you're right, Alexis, wouldn't you want to prop Russ up a little more? Yeah. Because look at Russ's stats this year. If you would have told me that Russ were ha- were to have these stats, I would have said, no way are the Broncos benching him. Russ, 66% completion, fine. That's probably right around average in the NFL. 3,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions, over a three to one touchdown to interception ratio. The Broncos haven't had that since Peyton was here. Yeah. yeah. But that shows you how much was left on the table still. Exactly. And Sean is like, yeah, this was, you know, the numbers are good, but they could be so much better. And we look at film like, numbers are great, but I just don't think it passes the eye test. Yeah. It's when you like, you know, when you're young and you hear about, oh, there's this 6'6", 330-pound old lineman that's just a monster. And then you go watch him and he's getting thrown around by people. Like, I think that's what, the stats look good. It looks good on paper. But when you watch it, you're like, something's not right here. Yeah. yeah, it looks good on paper. Then actually the last time we played the Chargers, I think he only had like a handful of passes that were actually from – that weren't from behind the line of scrimmage, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, I keep going back and forth. I'm so wishy-washy on this whole situation uh, just because I feel for Russ the guy, but we've obviously seen uh, his performance throughout the year. And like Todd said, the eye test is what matters most, and I feel like the stats are padded um, based off of a lot of – check downs and and guys making big plays after the catch todd you got some fans down there yeah we got a a, a family right here watching the show on the phone and then also down here at the bar so it's, that, it's definitely I love dope it. i <laughs> love so it cool. make sure to come down to the dnvr bar and alexis you said something uh very fascinating just there and i want to get into that after i tell you about our friends over at red hawk roofing where winter's definitely here we're 24 hours away from a true white Christmas. Yesterday yeah. I woke up and said, man, why is all this snow here today so nice. and not yesterday? But if you need a roof for your home or business, make sure to check out our friends over at Red Hawk Roofing where they have quality materials, decades of experience, quick response time. They have Colorado's best estimators and contractors. They're huge DNVR supporters and have been for a long time, which means you can trust them. They have free no obligation roof and property inspection and free in-depth photo reports for all inspections. So if you need a roof, 
a new roof or just a fix for your home or business, make sure to check them out at redhawkroofing.com and tell them the DNBR sent you. A shout out to our friends over at Breckenridge Brewery, where you can use their beer locator at breckbrew.com to find the beer new you. They have been doing great beers for over 33 years, and they have some phenomenal flavors that they want you to try. I personally love the Fun Slinger. It's probably one of my favorites. They have the Broncos Country Pale Ale, the Mile High City, uh, the Avalanche Amber Ale, all phenomenal beers. And if you want like a hard seltzer or something different, they have the Good Company Hard Seltzers. Uh, you can celebrate getting back on the mountain and one year of Fun Slinger. Oh, that's November 3rd. They're already passed. It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about <laughs> it. Still go check them out. Breckbrew.com. Find a brew near you. Alexis, if 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions isn't good enough for Sean Payton, mm -hmm. that should get Broncos country fired up yep. for what Sean Payton's expectations are because now he's saying that wasn't good enough and Russ wasn't good enough. Now his expectations and what he's telling Broncos country are that he is going to, whether it's next year or the year after, he's going to go find someone that's significantly better than that. And why significantly is this move is going to kill the Broncos <coughs> yeah. cap situation. The Broncos are going to be uh, hand handcuffed with this cap situation big time. $40 million cap hits in the next two years each or $85 million in dead cap after they decide to move mm. on from Russell Wilson. So this is Sean Payton showing that he can do much better than this. So that just puts the expectations really high for Sean. Yeah, they're very high. And he's an offensive-minded coach. So when you think of his teams, he wants you to think about the offense. When we think about our team, and even when we've had success, we have to mention the defense. Yeah. He doesn't want a defensively led team. Of course, he wants them to play well, but he yeah. wants you to talk about his quarterback, his running backs, his passing attack, and the way he schemes up the game. And that's not being talked about right now because Russell Wilson is not doing what he needs to do at quarterback. Damn. Yeah. Todd is just... Spitting facts. <laughs> just like I just got like the chills. I'm like, damn, that's that's so true. Yeah. I love it. So Jerry or Russell Wilson's time in Denver, 30 games, an eleven and nineteen record in those games, sixty-three percent completion. Uh he averaged thirty two hundred passing yards, twenty-one touchdowns to nine and a half interceptions, and a ninety passer rating. And the Broncos traded three players. And multiple first round picks, multiple yeah. second round picks, and one of the worst trades in NFL history, and then gave him a five year, $242 million contract on top of it. Before he even took a snap. Yep. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. was crazy. So there's gonna be so many ripple effects, which we're going to talk about. We have plenty of time to talk about it, but I do want to talk about the Kareem Jackson news. We mentioned it yesterday, talked about the Broncos deciding to move on from him, but they wanted to bring him back to the practice squad. And in uh, fact, we talked to Sean yesterday before Kareem was officially brought back to the practice squad. And Sean was talking about Kareem like he was already on the practice squad. Mm -hmm. Like it was a sure thing that he was going to clear waivers yeah. and then be brought back to the practice squad. And Sean was talking about, yeah, depending on the week, we might bring him up to the active roster. We might have him play not the case. The Houston Texans said, come back home, Kareem. Yep. It's funny because I think I can speak to this like because it was a very similar situation to what Sean did with me about four times. Mm. Like cut me, <laughs> brought me back on waivers until one time the Broncos were like, nah, we'll take that over here. <laughs> yeah. And the rest is history. But I mean, sometimes it happens when you take those gambles. Like we talked about yesterday, it's a 53 man roster. You can find one other guy to do that with with like less of a name and. Um, JL Skinner. Yeah, somebody. There's somebody yeah. else that you could do that 100%. to. And uh, sometimes you you take a gamble and it, and it bites you. So is it the wrong move? Did the Broncos make the wrong decision by letting him go to waivers? I'm going to say no, only because I don't think that they thought he was a starter anyway. Mm. Two games left. I don't think he's taken PJ's job. I think at most he was a security blanket if PJ went down. So. It was a gamble, but I don't know if, you know, him just sitting here inactive or not playing was the best thing for KJ. Yeah. Alexis? I think when this all went down yesterday, I was like, oh, he'll clear waivers. It's fine. Nobody took into consideration that his former teammate, D'Amico Ryans, is now the head coach of the Houston Texans. Yep. And that reunion, like, I'm just going to emotionally talk about this. Mm -hmm. I think it's so fucking cool. <laughs> like, I love this for K-Jack. I love that he's going home. Um, on a personal level, I think it's great that he's going to be on a team that, you know, potentially could do something here in the postseason. Yep. Um, 
good for him. Um, I think it's interesting that the Broncos didn't think that he could get claimed. Uh, you would think that the penalties and the suspensions would put like a little asterisk on him. But I think when you think of a guy like D'Amico who knows him and he knows the player that he is and, and what he could bring as a leader to that locker room, D'Amico was just like, yes. Yep. I love this. Go get my guy. And yeah. they just him. put Jimmy Ward, uh, their safety that yeah. caught the, the game-winning interception against the Broncos, they just put him on IR. So now Kareem can them. just be a starter right now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a perfect situation for Kareem. Yeah. This played out perfectly for Kareem. But the fact that Sean was talking about the Broncos potentially using yeah. Kareem in these next two games, yeah. they weren't going to do that. I think it does make it a, make a mistake. You don't think they were going to? I don't think to? they were going to do that. I think, I think PJ has... Um, establish his role as the starter at that position. And I think they're really excited about who yeah. he can be, not just the rest of this year, but next year. Yeah. And I think next year we're going to see, hopefully, obviously him back. I think that'll be key is bringing him back, PJ. And I'd like to see him and Caden go after it for that other starting position. Yeah, and that's why I don't think it's a big deal because you're absolutely right. Even if Kareem was back, he was going to be a backup. Yep. And now with the Broncos making this move a quarterback, it's more about evaluating in the future than that 6% chance and making the playoffs. So it's it's not a big move, but I do think it's a gamble the Broncos took uh -huh. thinking was going to come up their way, yeah. Yeah. And, and and it didn't. Um, but we've got many people chiming in, and so I want to make sure we hit these super chats. So let's dive in here on this massive day. Mile High wow. Sign comes in and says... This season is a major failure. Mm. If Sean knew he was going to move on from Russ, why win so many games? <laughs> we now need a quarterback and have a horrible draft pick. Yeah, I feel like maybe uh, RK's tin hat wasn't so tin after all. <laughs> and uh, we might have stumbled into some wins. And Sean was like, all right, bet. I got to just make something happen now. Um, because it definitely took us out the running for, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the draft. So it's tough. If we're going to be in this position anyway, it's tough. Yeah, you wish that you would have the second pick right now. Yep. Um, but Sean uh, needed a bigger sample size, and I think that's what James pointed to. Need a bigger sample size on Russ. And really, it was this past month, not even during the six, the one and five start. It was yeah. this past month that Sean started to really point the finger at one person, and now it's very clear that that one person was absolutely Russell Wilson. For sure. Next one coming in from Andrew says... You guys mentioned this previously, but slant passes have not been in the offense when Sean traditionally uses it. Russ can't see the middle of the field and puts his head down to escape in a good pocket. Yep. One of the things that Russ just doesn't do is operate on schedule. Uh -huh. And that's why when you point to Russ's strengths, you say off schedule. You say when he's running around, when he gets out of the pocket. Well, what is Sean's offense always done? Operated on schedule. Exactly. And those slant passes are maybe like the most on schedule pass of anything because you catch the snap, yeah. you, you read, see if he's open, see where the fender is, then you throw it. So I think we'll, we'll see a very different offense. We'll see Sean Payton's offense this week, even if it's a smaller, limited offense. I think so. And I think that the slant passes have worked when Russ has put the ball where he needed to. Like the one to Jerry mm -hmm. that got 40 yards, very first play of the Detroit game, yeah. it works. But most of the time when they were running him, he was putting them like behind Cortland or not on his body or leading him to where he can actually make more yards with it. So they tried to put them some slants in there. I just think he wasn't executing the way that he needed to. Didn't he have one to Mims this last week that was behind him too? I believe. Yeah. 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 I mean, it wasn't – he hit his hands. He could have – could have caught that, but at yeah. the end of the day, it wasn't a good ball. And what I go back to is Russ, I think, was 10 of 13 at some point in the first half last week, and eight of those completions were to either running backs or fullbacks. Uh -huh. One of them was to Marvin Mims, two yards behind the line of scrimmage, and then one, I believe, was uh, to Kroll, and that was the only pass downfield yep. to a non-running back. That's not sustainable for yeah. a long time. It's not. And when did you see Russ have the most success in the two-minute offense with who? Samaj P. Ryan. Just yeah. throwing little dump downs to him. Exactly. So I think that drove Sean nuts. Um, next one coming in from Andrew. He says, ever since Studisville left, we have had terrible running backs, and now he's with the Dolphins. Mostert is having the best season of his career, tied with Christian McCaffrey for touchdowns. Were you in town when Studis Stu, was here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With e, yeah, I was here with him. Uh, he's just a good coach, um, yeah. and everybody loved him. From uh, uh, all the guys I know that played for him, from uh, CJ to 
uh, no Sean. They all talk about how great of a coach he was. So sometimes it's tough. Sometimes coaches change change zip codes, but he was always a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's doing a hell of a job now. The the uh, hubs of Hall says. We welcome Russ into our lair. Hubs of hell. That was a <laughs> direct quote from something I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Zach Stevens glasses. Oh, says Zach may be talking, but we're the one shining. I don't know. I don't get it. Don't <laughs> Help me out here. Like, it's Zach it? Stevens glasses, and you had a big glare in your glasses. Oh, oh. So did he's I? saying that he was the one shining. <laughs> oh, yeah, Your glasses you know are what? talking for oh, you. God, I like dirty. the creativity of the names. Yeah, Like, yeah, I let's do. keep those coming. Keep it rolling. We yeah. need a Todd one dropping in yeah. here Uh-oh. soon. Casey says, um, another monumental... Uh, another monumental Broncos day spent with DNVR. Bum for Russ, bum for us and his fans, but stoked for has to be an eventual win at quarterback soon, I hope. Fingers crossed. We can't be wrong this many times. Like, you got to get right. <laughs> That's what I thought like six quarterbacks point, ago, right? Todd. <laughs> oh, my God. There's it's no like, law out there that says that you can't be wrong for the rest of your life. There's no <laughs> reason. You no, flip like, a coin because that means it's like 50-50. But this isn't saying? a coin flip. So like, you can God be wrong for the rest of your it's life. It's like a losing There's streak enough. against the Chiefs. Like, eventually it had to end, yep. right? Like, yep. eventually this losing streak with quarterbacks has If to Russ end. didn't do anything for us. He ended the streak with the Chiefs. Can we that? <laughs> yes. It's true. He That's ended official. that. Will Jared Stidham be able to end the streak against the Raiders? Very good question. His former Ooh. team. Mm. That'll be uh, that'll be juicy. Antonio Pierce is going to have them fired up. And like you said, Sean's going to have these guys fired up, whether it's through a motivational speech like Antonio Pierce or yep. whether it's everyone's job is on the line right now. So I love that. Jacob says, maybe Sierra... Will sign a 10 year, $500 million deal with Walmart at the same time Russ just happens to restructure to vet minimum. Man, smart. So if anyone's shady. gonna do some uh, some side deals, it's this ownership group because they've got the money for well, it. They can write that off. That's yep. a, you know what I'm saying? That's advertising. <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. <laughs> um, whoa, help me here. Camels and penguins. I think I got that. It says so. We're tanking next year. Maybe it's dime time. I don't think Sean tanks. Mm-hmm. Um, at one and five, he had the opportunity to tank. Yep. He had the opportunity uh, to not win any more games and then be in the Caleb Williams talk, be in the Drake May talk, be in a position where he didn't have to trade future first round picks. I think I said this yesterday. I think there's going to be a massive move at quarterback this year. Yeah. And the Broncos can't go out and sign Kirk Cousins to a $40, $50 million year deal. They can't go out and pay a big free agent because they're paying Russell Wilson at the same time. Yeah. So it's got to be a cheap option. They already have that cheap option with Jared Stidham. So the only other option is the draft. draft. I think the Broncos are going to trade a future first-round pick in order to move up in this draft. They have no stock. Give me it. Give me it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Todd, you didn't want that. Well, I know. Like. <laughs> I feel like if we wanted, to, you know, a higher pick, we should. We might have to lose these last two games because uh. trade and, and, and w- w- with what we'll be trading our ten years away. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? 30, we won't have a pick for ever. Yeah. 30, 30, 30. <laughs> yeah, that'd be in a long ass time. Yeah. 30, 33. Yeah, that would that would what, be a long. Listen, I don't. What I don't do know you if can, we'll be covering the team then? I know we're deader <laughs> than doornails by then. What would we be able to trade? Uh, like a Jerry Judy, a Corlin Sutton, or somebody like that, or maybe another player <laughs> with the draft pick to get higher? In your opinion? Here's the one player, and I hate saying this, but the one player Pat's that has value this off season, if you want to move up in the first round, it's our guy Pat Sertan. Yeah, that's the only guy that you can trade that's going to really catapult you up in the draft. And I'd rather trade a first-round pick than trade Pat. Yeah, me too. And uh, final Super Chat? Come, no, no, we got more. Coming in from Desert Bronco. Just hit us with the Super Chat. Thank you so much, Desert. We really appreciate that. And final one coming in from the 1980 says, someone tell Todd to give <laughs> us our jeans you back. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just a little Ameri, you know what I'm saying? Acid wash. Both of you look fly today. This you outfit looks leather. better standing up. I will say, <laughs> like sitting down, everything just like crunched, and I'm like, damn. Now I just look like a little brown blob sitting in this chair. <laughs> no. It's all right. And Todd, what's this hoodie or this? Oh, uh, this, this is just a uh, scotch, scotch and soda. soda. Oh, uh, it, you, you can't. It, 
You're just doing me like that. You're just like, oh, it's just a little bit of this. I'm like, not, you know no what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make, ever since you came uh, on the game day fit with the turtleneck neck <laughs> and, and the blazer, I'm just trying to match you, man. I'm yeah. going to be living on that outfit for the rest of my life. <laughs> just pointing to that one Heck time. Yeah. And I'm glad it, it came clutch there. Um, any final thoughts? Oh, did we just get one that came in? We did. Yeah. Marcus comes in and says, would you consider trading Pat Sertan for a top five pick? Bears will have two top five five picks so i don't think it's pat for a top five pick i think it's your 15th overall pick and pat Uh for probably the bears second pick which third i think right now would you do that deal i i don't want to see pat in another jersey personally i think he might have had a couple off moments throughout this season but the guys have in my opinion a future hall of famer i don't think you trade him I agree about the future Hall of Famer part. I would rather trade future first-round picks yep. than trade a future Hall of Famer. Yeah, because sure. those picks are still unknown. Like, we all know we've missed more than a handful of times in the first round, second round. I think when you finally get somebody that is as good as he was supposed to be coming out of college, you got to hold on to him. And you're also likely going to be picking the third quarterback yep. in that spot. So first-round yeah. pick plus a future Hall of Fame cornerback that you're going to have for the next decade plus for the third quarterback in a draft? Yep. Paxton Lynch was the third quarterback Golly. in that draft when the Broncos took him. <laughs> <laughs> you can't it's, be saying... It's just fact yeah, 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 but it's like, it, there's draft to draft to draft. It's like, it, it, come on. you get, It's like, that's That's stupid. a true <laughs> fact, though. Yeah, it's a fact, wrong. but it's also like a very misconstrued fact. Like, huh? that was a one quarterback class, and that quarterback ended up being not even the best quarterback, and that was Jared Goff. So all I'm saying is Jared like Goff was the best quarterback in that draft. Well, no, Carson Wentz was technically. Where's he? He was considered. I don't know. Yeah. Where's Carson? I don't know. I think I'm no. Jared Goff well, like, right well, now. At the time of the draft, though, like Carson Wentz was considered the number one best quarterback in that draft. Then Paxton Lynch was like in the 20s. When, yeah. So very different scenarios, in my I, opinion. I but you said, you said who's better now? Or who had a better career? <laughs> oh no, Jared Goff by a mile, in oh, my okay, opinion. Okay. But I just Carson Wentz was at the time considered. All worth like yeah, yeah. top, top, he top. Was nice. Okay. I think tomorrow you guys should just talk about all the people who think that Pastor Tan's not good. <laughs> oh That's my crazy. gosh. That's crazy that to me. Oh, we got a couple more super yeah, chats rolling oh. in. Um, we just hit that one. Exotic Gaming says, Go around the room. Do you think the Broncos draft a quarterback next year? Yes, I do. Yes. yes. First yes. round? See. Yes. See. <laughs> <laughs> um, casual Thomas just hits us with the super chat. Thank you so much. Very casual Thomas. Uh, and then Sammy T says, will Judy pop off? Potentially. Mm-hmm. Judy is way more of a, a timing wide receiver yeah. yep. than an off script receiver. So I would not be surprised. Man, this conversation, so much to continue to unpack. We're going to continue to do that tomorrow make sure to stick around for the rocky show coming up in just a few minutes we'll be back at 11 a.m tomorrow to break this down stay tuned to the dnvr.com for updates from sean payton later today alexis todd thank you so much for rolling with us today on a massive day in broncos country we'll see you tomorrow we all silly like the mayor 